Hi, and welcome to the next video in the Countess Shogun rigging series. In this one, we will be rigging the character's jaw, and this will be the only video I'll be making on this character's face. And that is because this skeleton wasn't really made for facial animation. But I still wanted to show you something, so here is the jaw. As always, let's start by bringing some order into the scene. Let's select the jaw bones and all of these lip control bones and move them to a separate layer. Here are the names, so you can better see which ones I picked. As the next step, let's scale down these temp bones so the scene doesn't feel so cluttered. Remember, scaling bones in edit mode doesn't really change their functionality, it's just a visual thing. Now, let's start working on the jaw itself. Start by selecting the jaw temp bone and renaming it to jaw control. I have already prepared a custom shape for this bone, so I will go ahead and assign it. Next, let's attach the jaw deform bone to this control. Start by duplicating it to make a buffer bone. Change its shape a bit so it's easier to see and select and rename it to buff C jaw. Then parent this buffer bone to the jaw control. And as the last step, using a copy transforms constraint, constrain the jaw deform bone to this buffer. That already wraps up the jaw and we can focus on the lips. For these lip bones, I will create controls the same way I did for the jaw. So here is the first one and then I will skip the rest because I'm just repeating the same steps. So I already made a buffer here, parented that to the temp bone and then constrained the actual deformation bone to the buffer. Then I changed the name of the temp bone and gave it a control suffix. And as the last step, I assign a custom shape to this control bone. And now I will skip ahead and show you how it looks after I've done the same for all of these lip bones. With that, we have a way to control the jaw and all of the individual lip elements. As the last step, let's improve how the lips deform when we open up the jaw so that we get a more natural behavior. So first, open up the jaw so that we get a nice looking open mouth position. Then shift select one of the lip bones and constrain to the jaw using a transformation constraint. In the constraint settings, change the spaces to local space. In the map from section, change the mode to rotation and set X max to 90 degrees. And then in the map to section, change the input axis to all be X. And then adjust the max values until you get a pose that looks very natural. What we want for this corner is that it rotates halfway with the jaw and then pulls a bit inwards. When you have something that you like, you can test it by rotating the jaw. The nice thing about this is that we are still able to individually animate all of the lip controls. Now let's copy the constraint to the other side. So select the other corner, shift select the one that has the constraint, control C and copy bone constraints. And one more thing we have to do here is to flip the direction on the X axis. Notice how the mouth behavior looks much more natural now. And this of course also saves a lot of time for the animators because they don't have to shape a nice looking open mouth every time they touch the jaw. Next, let's copy the constraint to the upper lip control and start adjusting its behavior. We don't need to change anything in the map from section, so let's focus on map 2. There is no formula to this, so just move the values around until you get a nice looking shape. For this control, I would also like that it rotates a bit, so I will constrain it again to the jaw using another transformation constraint. Set the spaces to local again, change map from to rotation mode and set X max to 90. And this time we are mapping to rotation as well. Change the Y source axis to X and then adjust Y max until you get a nice looking shape. And always test to see what it looks like in motion. That looks good, so I will move ahead and copy that to the other side. Same as with the corner control, let's flip the X axis direction for the first constraint. And for this one, we will also have to flip the direction of the rotation in the second constraint. And that wraps up the upper lip. The only other thing left to do is to do the same for the lower lip. I will just copy the constraints from the upper lip to the lower one and adjust the values. This one needs to go a bit up instead of down, so let's adjust the Z axis. And it needs to rotate in the other direction, so let's adjust that in the second constraint. Just slide the value until you get something that looks good to you. 
Then test to see what it looks like, and if you're satisfied with the results, just go ahead and copy that to the other side the same way we did with the earlier examples. So flip the direction of the x-axis motion for the first constraint and the rotation direction in the second constraint. After that was done, I went ahead and did a cleanup pass. And that is it for the job. This is a very simple yet effective setup that is easy to animate. And lastly, if you learned something from these videos and would like to see me make more, consider subscribing and maybe supporting me on one of the platforms listed below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.